Recording is on. Hi, everybody. Welcome back on the channel. My name is Ken Wan. Well, today we're going to make a special interview with a special guest, uh, Crypto Bear. So, welcome to Crypto Bear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. So, for the first song, it is called Bear Market. Yeah. So, in Monero, especially, right? There's always all this doubt about somebody's going to ban it. It's going to become illegal. No, uh, you know, uh, no exchange is going to have it or, you know, you'll go to jail if you own it. And, and all this uncertainty. And it's extremely, extremely reminiscent of the early days of Bitcoin. Right. I don't think a lot of people understand the context behind in the early days of Bitcoin. You couldn't walk around and talk to people about Bitcoin without somebody thinking it was something illegal. Binary fate probably was one of the best. He had this tweet and I'll, uh, where he talked about if you wouldn't have if if you wouldn't buy Monero now because you think it of regulatory risk or they're going to change the laws or it's going to be illegal at some day or something, you would have not bought Bitcoin back in 2013. You think yeah. buying Monero now is hard. You should have seen what for those early people buying Bitcoin was like. These early adopters were very idealistically driven. It takes some ideological reasoning for you to stick by something that doesn't have any uh, you know, current potential, but the future has a lot of possibility and potential. This is why it tends to, I believe, attract these these early adopters tend to be very, I wouldn't say eccentric to, to put it, right? It draws the eccentric crowd. Why? Because these eccentric tendencies are the same reason that, that early adopters are willing to take on risk in terms of not knowing what comes down the road. I think people don't realize is when we say the next Bitcoin, we're talking about what Bitcoin originally was supposed to do, right? Exactly. The white paper says digital peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, right? Yeah. And the whole premise of this is for a lot of these early adopters is freedom, right? We talk yeah. about this potential for a future and there's always a fork in the road, right? The future can either be very good and full of liberty and freedom, or the future could be really bad, a draconian totalitarian state where people are not free. So let's let's play the first song, Bear Market. Monero, Monero, no G. Okay, man, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so good, so good. All right. So next song is uh, Monero Extremists. Basically, if I understand the idea is that uh, we need to make crypto scary again. Yeah. So first off, right, I had the idea that, you know, there's so much of Bitcoin maximalist, right? And yeah. the idea of a Bitcoin maximalist now is is really, in my opinion, changed a lot from the initial spiritual understanding and, and rationale for why Bitcoin was important in the first place, right? It's all about compliance as long as the price goes up. And not really caring about those traditional values that that were important to the early cypherpunks. So if we have a maximalist in Bitcoin, what is Monero? Well, Moneros are extremists, right? All they care about are the traditional values that gave cryptocurrency value in the first place. Privacy, anonymity, peer-to-peer -peer cash, being able to be in charge of your money and not being relying on a third party, right? Decentralization of the nodes, being able to mine on regular hardware, not having ASICs. Genesis block for people who are not familiar with cryptocurrency in general is the initial block, right? So when we talk about the Bitcoin Genesis block, it's the initial block, okay, like block zero that started the whole blockchain. And mm -hmm. initial block zero had a message in there about, uh, it was the title of the day and the times, right? I'm drawing a blank, but basically it was mentioning about how the banks were having another bailout, right? The competitors to Monero in 2016 are not the competitors to Monero today. And I don't think people realize that. Monero has survived. We have the contrast between the big Bitcoin people, you know, they are in front of uh, charts and, and they are afraid. <laughs> Contrary, you have McAfee holding... Um, They're afraid of being painted as an extremist. And yeah. I take great pleasure in if somebody says Monero is a bunch of extremists, congratulations. In a world of passivity, where every cryptocurrency tries to put on the best facade for a PR firm, we don't take apologies in terms of what our values are. All right, everybody, for this bear market with Crypto Bear. <laughs> I'm a Monero 
Elon Musk. <laughs> this is me rapping. I'm a hacker who raps, not a a, a, a rapper who hacks, right? Or a, right, yeah. I didn't originally get excited about cryptocurrency to get rich. If I had to historically look at a power structure that has never been questioned, yet has always pervasively been behind most of the ills of the world, it has been central banking. Um, and instead realize, hey, you don't need to tax people who are not, you know, super billionaires. They're, they're just middle class people and you want to tax them more and more. The middle class has become the powerhouse of keeping taxation going. And all these policies are really detrimental to the longstanding, you know, issues. And central, central bank being a cancer is because they create money that they, they can basically print unlimited amounts of and feed it back into a system um, to pump inflation, right? And inflation is just a fancy way of adding liquidity in a way that benefits the system more than the people, right? Exactly. If I take a huge $10 million loan and inflation's at 10%, in 10 years, I don't have to pay back as much money, right? Because the true purchasing power goes down 10% per year versus a person that's making minimum wage or whatever it is. We've been so much conditioned to argue with one another and find these small differences when we forget that the biggest problem is a money system that is created to basically create debt slaves. But their democracy, you know, what they call their democracy, it is how hydrocracy, you know, you know, when they started to follow Elon Musk and uh, like ships, you know, basically. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, you see that in cryptocurrency too, right? We careful because if you don't pay attention, you're going to create a layer one that mimics the banking system, right? If you have a layer one that doesn't scale, layer two lightning, and you've got to lock up a certain amount of funds, what did you just create? You created a payment network that rewards people who hold a large amount of the wealth by charging small transaction fees you just reinvented the banking system and replaced money creation through creating liquidity and you're basically getting paid funding for providing that liquidity in a locked account in a context no i don't hate bitcoin i hate people who are trying to create bitcoin into a banking system that doesn't free us from the reason we created bitcoin in the first place so that's you know and i can't believe that's an extremist point of view but if it is we're all extremists yeah. All right. Normie's talking about the environmental impacts of cryptocurrencies. And on this bit about, um, How many wars you know, they talk about the environmental impacts of cryptocurrency. Crisis. Banks yeah. are talking about that as if banking bankers. systems didn't create wars. Elon, not all the future for cars in the loft. Elon's a me. Elon's a me. Fuck his opinion. Fuck his Right now, the best tool for freedom as governments right now are accelerating quickly at stopping freedoms right yeah. we, you know it's they're they're all, money printing by banks right it's through the roof digital central bank currencies right and the problem yeah. with those is literally all the evil things about cryptocurrency with all the evil things about central banks kiss and have a baby right? another song of fuels is um so I can't feel my losses. Man, it reminds me of, of there were a couple of times in my life that I really, I was trading a lot and I relied on it heavily, right? I uh, have alarms going off in the middle of the night, waking you up. You're like, okay, cool. Let's, let's do this. Right. Um, it's definitely, it's a lot different, right? I don't, I don't have the energy to do that anymore. Uh, then there is a song, uh, Solo Mining Monero. If we're talking about what got me excited about cryptocurrencies, right? And it's the fact that you're taking the power dynamic of central banks being the only ones that could produce currency. All of a sudden, you're privatizing it so that people can create money that can't just be printed away by somebody who's not even a part of a government, right? You know, if you have like ASICs that are mining and there's only 10 companies who run like 90% of the hash rate of a coin, you just need to show up to 10 buildings with your regulator and be like, hey, I need you to do this, this, and that for these reasons. Exactly. Right? I could vote for that with my mining hash rate, right? Which was the whole concept of being able to, you know, Satoshi's idea of one CPU, one vote, right? I think Monero using random X is the closest thing we have to today. Yeah. Every hash 
straight for to bank up on solo mining. So another song is I want Monero. Censorship resistance money is is an interesting take because at the time we understood censorship. People are like, yeah, I'm against censorship, right? Okay. What if censorship was legal and it's illegal to say that you're against censorship, right? Does your opinion change? And a lot of people would, oh, well, you know, uh, what if it's censorship for a good cause, right? Uh, what? And uh, that's why I'm like, well, censorship needs to be a, 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 a binary option of either you're for it or against it. You can't draw a line because if not, you're pro censorship, but you just have a lot of extra details on top of it to tell yourself that you're not for censorship, right? Yeah. And with money, that becomes important because originally everybody understood censorship resistant money means no one can stop you from spending your funds. I can, there's all sorts of things of, I can go on Craigslist and if I want to buy a toaster, I show up with cash and I buy a toaster exchange. Cool. But all of a sudden, when you involve cryptocurrency, they want to throw regulation and I need to get his ID and we need to get each other's social security number. And then we need to learn a secret handshake before we're able to do a trade. If, if it's traceable, it, it doesn't have as much use case and it becomes a problem because instead of helping you be free, it could be used as a tool against you in the future. That in the future, someone is going to analyze the blockchain and yep. find some links. And then, you know, years after... You're going to have a phone call about the transactions you made 10 years ago. And I really think there's a great disconnect and one of two things either happens, right? Eventually the market in the long term is going to weigh Monero on its fundamentals and it's valued a lot higher in my opinion, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's undervalued right now. Or I was completely wrong about this. And, you know, um, and, I, you know, I think that's at the end date, that's kind of the decision people have to make for themselves. All right. Then uh, you have a song. It's a uh, dark thoughts from the dark web. And, you know, because it, I, I think it's 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 a evil world out there and bad things randomly happen. And, you know, you have to be pre prepared to protect people you care about and love. Right. Yeah. And, you know. Everything is now so socially against controversial topics that discussions of certain topics can get to a point where you get canceled for those, right? And it can affect your personal life, your career, your job, even when, you know, it's, it's, it's discussions. You know, they're changing what's acceptable now, right? Uh, no pride to hide, my best friend talking suicide. About the last song, you know. Monero yeah. party. You know, it's it's the if we're not careful, we all become prisoners in a free society. Because we all become criminals in a free society. It's just a matter of whoever's in control. Can you yeah. repeat this? Sentence, it was powerful, I think. Can you yeah, that? so if we're not careful, we all become prisoners in a free society, right? So we yeah. have everybody is a criminal. It's just a matter of whoever selectively gets to go after people. And in a society where everybody's a criminal, anybody who opposes you for whatever reason gets to go after you and find a way to imprison you. So it's almost as if that dichotomy of in a society where we're supposed to be free, yet we're prisoners of these underlying power structures, a prisoner getting to party is freedom as a prisoner. So it's almost like cryptocurrencies can enable prisoners to be free, right? So, you know, society is the prison. People are the prisoners. We're throwing a party, a Monero party, because the Monero a party is synonymous with freedom of, of, of being outside of that, right? So it's, it's kind of, if, if you want to extend that as a, as a metaphor, is who would have thought of a prisoner kind of partying, right? We're really going to times where, uh, you know, privacy is getting attacked. Freedom is getting attacked. Money is getting attacked. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what I saw as the greatest tool for it, I was like, man, we really don't get attention for this. So there's no. Um, and I thought, you know, from a marketing standpoint, it maybe would be beneficial not only to Monero community is amazing community, but we sometimes shy away from the things because, you know, the Dogecoin fans have no problem walking around with Dogecoin shirts saying to the moon, 
the Monero people never wear their Monero stuff. I've never worn that Monero sweater outside of that video or in my house. It just, nobody wants to, to reach a broader uh, audience. So I was really trying to make it easy for this to, to reach maybe a broader audience. Um, and I, honestly, I was really surprised with how well received it was. It cool. means that we might need to be in places that none of us like to use. None of us are probably on Instagram mentioning, you know, Monero that we might have the best technology, but I'm sorry that there's so much more spotlight on projects like Dogecoin and things because, you know, there might be no technology. The people might not know anything about it, but it's marketed in all the places we don't go to, right? Exactly. We're not on TikTok exactly. saying Monero. We're not on Instagram saying Monero, but you search Dogecoin or something and there's a ton exactly. of it, right? Exactly. The privacy sector within the cryptocurrency world, when you look at different sectors, is completely undervalued. And I understand that there's a lot of key players that have quite a bit of money invested into, you know, like Grayscale has a, a Zcash uh, fund, right? And when you look into, well, if Grayscale has that fund, uh, key players have made quite large investments into specific privacy coins. Um, I know Grayscale at some point, you know, did initial filing documents for having a Monero Grayscale fund. But when you track down the money yeah. behind that, you see why certain exchanges um, offer one currency, not another, especially when you look at like who is like, behind grayscale is also has invested money into like coinbase and things like that and when you understand that okay maybe zcash was the institutional play as a privacy coin but when you see that it's not utilized you realize they really can't use that as the, the investment play for privacy exposure eventually That's in it. those scenarios the market needs to react and, and it's realized that, well, for the privacy play, Monero needs to be the one that does it, right? There's a reason that the founding fathers fought the creation of a central bank in America three, four, five different times. The colonies in America created yeah. their own currency. Nobody talks about how big the fact that we had our own currency in America, like in the US, had um, directly contributed to the, the war of uh, on independence, right? America originally flourished because they were outside of control of central banks for the longest time. See, the thing about debt-backed currency, which is what we have in history through central banks, it enables a small group of people to create currency, right? Now your government borrows money against money you created, right? You They owe you money. So taxpayer money goes to fund interest that you created out of nothing. Over time, eventually the money becomes worthless and the bank institution and bank families who own that institution own all the hard assets, whether it's real estate, gold, you know, factories, whatever it is. Once that money collapses, they own the real things and they traded you all your real stuff for money that's worthless. Benjamin Franklin, when he visited uh, England, um, he was walking around, was like, wow, there's a lot of homeless people, you know, and, and hardship and they the the English wanted to know why the colonies were doing so well. Benjamin Franklin basically said, "Well, we created our own currency, right? And this currency wasn't backed on debt that just incrementally makes it so that the money becomes worth less. People work and they store their wealth, right? Um, so by design, fractional reserve banking, when it's based on debt, is functionally created by design to extract wealth from whatever system uses it." In 1970, right, in the U.S., like a guy could graduate high school, right, work at McDonald's for minimum wage, and in three years buy a house, right, like cash, just own the house. He could have a stay-at-home wife, like five kids, all from a minimum wage McDonald's job, right? Now, the equivalent of like what you would need in purchasing power adjusted for inflation is close to $120,000 a year. Right. Easy. But so yeah, it was a, a real pleasure, you know, to to have this talk with you. And yeah, to you. yeah, great, man. It's all the places people could find me on. Okay, perfect.